with vintages, even God with recompense. He will come and save you. He will open the ears of the dead. Shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. Or in the wilderness shall the waters break out, the streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and a thirsty land springs of water. And the habitation of dragons, where each lake shall be dragged and reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and a way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over, but it shall be for those the wayfaring man, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any previous beast shall go thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk therein. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sign shall flee away. May the Lord add his blessings to the least reading of his word. I want to speak tonight, if God willing, just a few moments to you. I watch my watcher that I don't keep you too long tonight. After through the services of this week trying to show people that there's no need of being scared, the worst thing the devil can put up on you is fear. If you even had a cancer and didn't fear and believe God would heal you, you wouldn't be in too bad a shape. God take care of that. If you were sick, whatever it is, if you didn't fear. So fear is one of the worst things that Satan can place up on the person. Now, this week I have tried to prove by the scripture that the man that's born again of the kingdom of God has nothing to fear. You're absolutely safely secure in Jesus Christ. All the Father has given me, he said, will come to me. No man can come unless the Father calls. The Father's got to lead him up to me, and he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. And all the, no man can pluck him out of my Father's hand. No man's greater than he is. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation, but pass from life, from death unto life. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood hath, not will have, but hath present tense everlasting life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. Wherefore, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed until the day of your redemption. There you are. Sealed away until the day of your redemption. Not just from one revival to another, but till the day of your redemption. By how the Holy Ghost come in this morning and bless us on that. Step ashore at one thirty this morning from about 9.30. How he blessed us. Now tonight, I want to speak on, oh, Isaiah said here, there shall be a highway and a way of holiness. Now I want to speak on God's way. God's way that's been made for us. Now, if I was going to New York City, the best thing for me to do is not try to find geographically how I'm uh, situated and take off north, but the best way to do is get a map and follow the map. Is that right? A highway. But don't I get in trouble? There's no shortcuts in God's kingdom. You know, we try to make a shortcut, we get out here in a pond somewhere and mire down. And that's what we do when we get off the grand old highway of God. Amen. God's made a path, a way. When the children of Israel come out of the land of Egypt, they followed God's path. It led up to the Red Sea. It's strange that God would lead his path up that way, but his path went right through the sea. So when it comes time in the showdown, and Israel stood there before the sea, God's path led across the sea, so God looked down through the pillar of fire. The sea got scared and moved back, and Israel went across on dry land. Amen. 
God's path led through it. Then he went right up to the wilderness, into the spring of Myra, bitter water. Is it strange that God would lead his children to bitter waters? But them all goes along the road. But when he was there, the remedy for the bitter waters was standing on the bank. Moses cut out a tree and throw it in the water and turn sweet again. Some to the water, some to the flood, some to deep trials, but all to the blood. That's the way God leads his children. God has God provided way. If the children of Israel would have to try to bypass and go around down this way, they'd have gotten in trouble. They had to follow the cloud of fire, the pillar of fire that led them. They followed that. And if the church tonight will only follow the pillar of fire, the Holy Spirit, you'll make Canaan as sure as anything. God has a way, a provided way. There's two ways a man can go. And that's his way or God's way. And that's the right way or the wrong way. And your way is always the wrong way, and God's way is the right way. Amen. And you can't be in your own way and in God's way at the same time, so you got to get out of your own way so God can have his way in you. Amen. That's right. Amen. God makes a provided way. Man has always wanted to make his own way. In the Garden of Eden, God made a man so he didn't have to shift for nothing. God made him perfect. But man wanted his own way. He wanted to hamper. He wanted to find out. And then as soon as he fell, we went through that this week in the studies of the scripture, he made himself a religion. He didn't wait for God to make him one. He made one himself. But he found out that his religion, his covering, wouldn't work. That's always been man. He wants his own way. But God had a way. So man made big leaves and put them over him, him and his wife. But when he come down to face God, he found out that wouldn't work. Amen. And I'll tell you, friends, there's been a many a man in his tonight that's coming down to the end of the road to find out that that little shallow religion that you're holding on to won't work. Amen. Nothing Amen. short of being born again will work. Amen. Jesus said, except a man be born of water and spirit, he will in no wise enter into the kingdom. No wise, no matter if he's Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Whatever he is, he'll not enter in until he's born of water and spirit. Born means he's changed. He has to die before he can be born. So you got to die to yourself, be reborn again in Christ Jesus. That's right. Now, I want you to notice, he found himself trying to make his way. We had this morning how Cain tried to make his way. He brought out some apples and pears and peaches and pumpkins there, what it was, laid it up on the altar and said, Now there, Lord, I build an altar. I build a church. I'm a good church member. See? I go to church every day. I come here and build the altar. I put the sacrifice up on it. Now I'm going to kneel down and pray. And now, Lord, I want you to receive me. But God refused me. And that same old religious spirit lives right down amongst the church today. The very same thing, just as religious as they can be, and knows no more about God than a hot and top would know about Egyptian night. You know that's the truth. Religious spirit. Don't think it's stalling is the Antichrist. The Bible says the two spirits to be so close together to see the very elect if possible. Amen. We find out that Judas is the carrot, come right down and went out and rejoiced and preached the gospel, come back, tolerant and shouting and having a big time with the rest of the disciples. St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. But he followed the disciples right along, yet the incarnated devil. And come right along as Jesus was the incarnated God, the Cain and the Abel from the Garden of Eden. But when it comes time for him to go up to Pentecost and get the blessing, he showed his colors. And when you were talking about being born again, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, nine times out of every ten, them spirits will show their colors what they are. You say that's a bunch of fanaticism. Leave it away. Brother, it's God's provided way for man today. Hallelujah. Look, God has always made a provided way. God's under obligation to make a way. God makes a way for nature. Why should we have these big floods through the country? You cut off all the timbers and things like that that are washed down. You build up a dam down here, build up the riverbed. There she goes. The water can interfere with nature. 
God had to provide a way. That's what causes the flood. Anything that man tampers into that God has made perfect, then you imperfect it. That's right. Now, this like, for instance, like the, the ducks. I actually watch the ducks of seasons when I go hunting up in the mountains. I'd be up there in the fall of the year. Well, there the ducks all come out of Louisiana down there, down the swamps, go up north, and they settle down, make a nest, and raise their little ducklings. Then the little fellows raise up. They can come along about September this time of year, or late September, and then the little old duck, little drake, he's never been off that pond. He's just right there in a pond. After a while, the frost flies up there on the mountain, and the little snow hits up there, and a cold breeze blows down across that mountain. That little old duck feels that. I've never been no word on that pond. He ain't a year old yet. He sticks his head up there, a little honker, run out in the middle of the pond, go, ha, ha. Every duck on the pond will come to him. Every duck on the pond knows that he's a born leader. And that little old duck will rise off that pond without a compass or anything else and go just as straight to Louisiana to the right field as he can go. Looks like Christians ought to have duck sense anyhow. Right. right. Why? You said instinct. No, they go God's provided way. God give them a way, an instinct to lead them down there, and they believe it. But God give man the Holy Ghost, and he rejects it. He wants his own way. But God has a provided way for it. Hallelujah. I feel kind of religious tonight. As you listen to a few nights of revival, notice, there it is, yes, sir. That little duck will go down there, and I'll tell you something else. You go out here in the newspaper say tomorrow, it's going to be pretty weather. And you go hunting and watch them rabbits go to settle down in that grass. <laughs> Don't you be in that newspaper. You watch that old sow take the shucks off of the north side of the hill and take them over here on the south side of the hill and make her uh, a bed over on the south side of the hill. She knows more about it than all the newspaper commentators in the world. Yeah. Right! <laughs> She's got an instinct. Getting around on the south side to hide that cold north wind coming down. <laughs> oh my! If a horse got sense enough to hide from the breeze, what about you and the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Hallelujah! That's your instinct. Yes, sir. It's God gave them an instinct. It's God's provided way for them. They live in God's provided way. You take a flower, when he dies, he goes down the ground. It's not the end of him, he lives again. God made a provided way for him, and he believes in it. God always has made a provided way. Sometimes it don't lead to pleasant things. Sometimes it goes through the hardships, but it's God's provided way. God makes it anyhow. One time he had a man in God's provided way. He had to go into a lion's den, but he went God's provided way. God brought him back out again. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can see some Hebrew children sitting down there in Babylon one morning. They refused to bow to an idol. That's right. They said, we won't do it. Beat all the music you want to and sound your cornets and trumpets, but we'll not bow down to your idol. Hallelujah. Give us some more Shadrach and Shadrach. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hell is not bow down to your worldly stuff. We don't have to knock down to it. God's made us free by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now I can see down there one morning. Let's, let's, let's turn our cameras down that way a minute and watch and see. I can see them boys down there one morning. They said, now look, the king said, everybody don't bow down. We're going to throw him in the fire furnace. And they went and prayed through one night. The next day when the sound comes, they said, bow before the image while they turned their back to it. So he come out and said, boys, did you do that? Yeah, well, we eat the furnace up seven times harder than it ever was. Now, isn't that strange? There was a game plank laying out here, going up to the mouth of the furnace. All over Babylon was red that morning, the fire roaring. I see King Nebuchadnezzar as a modern man today. He stood out there and said, Now we'll just burn all that Holy Ghost religion out of them guys. Oh, yeah. Don't you think the devil won't burn you? <laughs> he sure will. But remember, the Holy Ghost is by itself. Now, I want you to watch. God's way led right up that gang plank. I can see Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo walk in the death march. I can hear Shadrach say, Benigo, did you pray through? Yeah. All right. 
Are you sure you're God's way? Yes, sir. God said in His Word for us not to bow to idols, and we won't do it. God is able to deliver us from this fire furnace, but if you don't, what of it? We're not going to bow down. We're going God's provided way. I hear somebody say, Are you sure you got His provided way? Yes! Hallelujah. Some say, Well, don't you think all that people possible could be right instead of you? No, sir. The Bible said so. And we're staying with it. Right up that gangplank to go. I he gets so the intense he was almost is it killed a man that brought him up. They're just about ready to step in. God hasn't said a word, they're still walking the provided way. Walked right up to the mouth of the furnace, just about time they got ready to step into the fiery furnace. You know I got an awful bright picture here in front of me just now. A man that tries to live true to God, walking God's provided way, fixing to be burned up. What a picture. Notice, all the time there's something going on down here, there's something going on up there at the same time. Amen. Let's look up there a little bit and see what goes on. I can see him sitting there and his priestly robes around him. Hallelujah. I can see the first thing coming from the right, a great big angel called Michael. They got one up there. Did you know that? I can hear him right up there at the other side of him say, Master! I can see him take his sword out of his shield like this and say, Have you looked down at Babylon this morning? There's man walking God's provided way. There's man who's willing to seal their testimony this morning. Our brother is just about to be burned. I hear him say, Let me go down there. I'll change the picture. I believe he could have done it. I do. I hear him say, No. Can't let you do it, Gabriel. You've been a, a Michael. You've been a very fine angel. So put your sword back. And the attention there. Here comes another angel. He's called Wormwood. He makes the water bitter. Here he comes up, and Master, look down there. I've got all the control of the waters. You turned it over to me in the Andalusian destruction, and I've washed the whole world away, all but Noah and his people. Now, he said, let me go down there, and I'll wash Bannon off the map. I hear him say, what more you can do it. That's right, but I can't let you go. It's a man's side job. <laughs> oh, I see him raise up like that. They're just about to make the last step. I can see him reach over there and say, Come here! To a big thunderhead hanging back on her. Oh, uh. It obeyed him! I stand here and say, East wind, north, west, and south. Come here and get on this thunderhead. I'm going to drive you like horses and we're going to set on this thunderhead this morning like a chair. I'm going to get that bad with myself! Hallelujah! I see him reach up, get a hold of the zigzag like she's cracking across the sky. Like that, just to make their last step, walking in God's provided way. And about the time they hit in there, he passed by the sea of fire and picked up a palm, and he was standing down there, fanning the breeze off. Hallelujah! He's always there when man will walk God's provided way. Yes, sir. One time there was no quack preacher, no holiness preacher, back down there a long time ago by the name of Noah. He said, you horse go to rain, go to come a storm. I hear the people go around and say, say, do you hear that old holy roar up there? He said, it's going to rain. Well, it never rained up on the earth. He's going to rain. How would that water come from? Well, let's go get the science out and find out if there's any water up there. Why? No, there's no water up there. What's the matter? That old preacher's off in his head. But God said so. Amen. God said, prepare an ark, Noah, for the saving of your household, for the saving of the people. And Noah just had sense enough to do it. That's all. He come and prepared the ark. And one day I hear some of them down on the corner talking down the business corner. Some of them say, hey, what about that rain story up there? That old quack preacher talking about it's going to rain up there. Did you ever hear such a thing? And he thinks he's in God's provided way. He was. <laughs> Amen. The first thing you know, there come a thunder and a lightning. I see the old, big old mammy camel out there look up and say, Papa Camel? You hear what that was? That was thunder. That's what Noah said. Let's get to the ark. <laughs> Down across the hill we went. Here comes Papa Horse and Mama Horse and all the rest of the pairs right into the ark. One by one, God closed the door, set the ring. No, it's in God's provided way. Some of them got on logs that I spoke to, but I tell you, when the storms begin to raise, the ark went up. Hallelujah. While they were in God's provided way. Amen. God will always bless people that are walking away. He provides. He never provided a law. He never provided this. He provided an art. And today, my brother and sister, there is a way provided for men and women. That's through Jesus.
Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died out of Calvary. But we have remission of sins and can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost as approval of God that He's accepted us into His Son, Christ Jesus. Safely secure. Hallelujah. We'll call me only over anyhow, so you might as well get started now. All right, I feel pretty good. All right, you believe that? That is God's way, and the only way. It ain't the Methodist way, it ain't the Baptist way, it ain't the Presbyterian, it ain't the Pentecost, it's Christ's way. Christ is God's provided way. God provided sacrifice. He's Jehovah Reba. He's Jehovah Jah. He's Jehovah Manasseh. When Abraham offered up Isaac, he called the place uh, Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. And there it is. Amen. The Son of God. Amen. Amen. God always makes a way of escape. Yes, sir, one time there's an old preacher down there preaching by the name of Elisha. He got up there and looked out over the country and he said, I'll tell you, it's the office I ever seen. The little old king down there went and married a little old painted up Jesse Bell. Amen. Enough paint on her face to make the only woman in the Bible that ever painted her face. Amen. And you know what God did to her? God fed her to the dog. Amen.
Why he's better off than half the people in here tonight. I imagine there ain't very many here tonight that's got colored servants. But he has some colored servants, some crows bringing him something he'll ever need. Uh, why? Why in our dining room somewhere? He fixed it up, cooked it up, sent it to him. Hallelujah! That same God lives and reigns today. Made his provided way. God said, well, pray to sit down, so he's done it. That's all he know to do. What do you think about that? Is that true? That's true. Amen. That's your little girl was going down the street one day. She said, Man in your own thing, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. She just got the Holy Ghost. So there's no old infidel sitting over the corner said, What does I have me about, youngin? Said, Oh, Jesus, just saved me, filled me with the Holy Ghost. So that's what happened. Said, Look, what says you got your hands in the Bible? Said, You believe that? Sure. Said, you believe all of it? All of it. Said, you believe that story about Jonah? Yes. Said, do you believe that actually that whale swarmed the man? Yes, sir. I believe it. Said, how are you going to prove it any other way besides faith? She said, well, when I get to heaven, I'll just ask Brother Jonah. <laughs> the infidel said, you're, said, what if Brother Jonah's not in heaven? Said, then you have to ask. <laughs> Only one place left for him, that's hell. If you reject God's way, you've got to go to hell. You have to go to hell. Amen. All right. I can see him down there, sitting up there, ravens bringing some deep. Walk back down there, one of the hill one day, and God said, now the pool's dried up. I want you to go down there to a widow's house. What a place for a preacher to go. God told him to go. That was provided way. He walked down there and she wasn't an Israelite either. No, she wasn't. And she walked back down and he went down the hill and he's going down the hill. He met an old widow standing in the yard, a break in a stick. Said, go in and give me something to eat and bring me some water. She said, if the Lord lives in your soul every night, I've only got enough meal in the house to make one little cake for my son. I'm taking two sticks that I might bake this cake and he and I eat it and die. They go fetch me a little water first and bake the cake and bring it to me. What you gonna do? There's God's provided way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. He said, Brother Bill, my mother run away from home, my husband won't live with me. Seek Go meet Jesus. Go meet him. He 
they deny the virgin birth? Not only that, but a survey showed that 85% of the Protestant preachers of the United States claim that the virgin birth was a fake. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. I can easily do that. I can easily think that from the way you live it. Amen. That's exactly Amen. the truth. Amen. Believe it was a fake. And the greater percent of that didn't believe that Jesus would visibly return again. No wonder we need a revival. Brother, listen here. You hear so much about revival today. We've never had a revival. Amen. Amen. I followed up another man here not long ago where he talked about a lot of this. He said he went to one city and he had 5,000 conversions. We followed right behind it, not me, a group of ministers that jumped the cars and followed them back again. And in 30 days' time, they couldn't find 30 that came to be saved. You know what I think? I think it's conviction instead of conversion. When I was born again of the Spirit of God, what we need today is not a protracted meeting, but an old fashioned structure and holy ghost revival. An old time sky blue. Makes you take them tar tools back and do repentance. Amen. That's Amen. right. She said, and she said, well, look here, Brother Ram, I can prove to you that he wasn't nothing but a man. I said, do it. If you can prove to me that he wasn't God, then I'll accept it. She said, no, he wasn't divine. He was just a man, and I can prove it by the Bible that he was just a man. I said, if you can prove it by the Bible, then I'll accept it. She said, are you ready? I said, I am. She said, when he went down in St. John 11, when he went to the grave of Lazarus, he wept. I said, well, that's got to do with it. I said, well, it proved he was nothing but a man. He was crying. I said, look at your lady. He was a man, truly, but he was more than a man. He was a God-man. God was in Christ reconciled the world to himself. Yes, sir, he came to do the will of the Father. He walked God's provided way. He never looked to the right or to the left. He done what God said to He walked God's provided way. And on the road to Lazarus, he wept. He was a man when he was weeping. But when he stood there to the side of the grave where a man had been dead four days now, growing skin worms running in all his body and a stink around, when he said, Lazarus, come forth! A man had been dead four days. Could all his feet live again? That was more than a man. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. He was a man crying, but he was God in the resurrection. He was a man when he came down off the mountain that night, hungry, looking all around on the trees for something to eat. He was a man when he was hungry, but when he took five biscuits and two little pieces of fish and fed 5,000 people, that was more than a man. And it was God in flesh. Hallelujah! He was a man when he laid on the book that night when virtue went out of his garment till he was so weak till even a mighty sea roaring. Ten thousand devils of the sea swore they had drowned him that night. When that little old boat tossed about out like a bottle stopper on a mighty sea. Oh, he was a man when he was laying there asleep. But when they said, Care thou not that we perish, he stuck his foot up on the frail of boat and said, Peace! And there was a cause that was more than a man. Hallelujah. Yeah. That was my God. Yeah. Right he was. Just as he did. He was a man when he was hanging on Calvary. When they give him the greatest tributes he ever did. When he said he saved others, he cannot save himself. What a wonderful tribute or compliment they paid him. If he saved his others himself, he couldn't save others. So he had to give himself in order to save others. Amen. He was a man when he cried for mercy. When he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He died like a man. Amen. Yes. But when he rose on Easter morning, he proved he was God. He no one of the prophets said, living, he lost his dying, he saved me. There he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. Sunday he's coming on the glorious day. Hallelujah. I love him. Don't you walk in God's provided way? I can see some wise men one time going to his birth to worship him. I can see them all getting ready to packing up their camels. I can see Jim Jones and all the rest of them and John Doe 
He said, taste and see the Lord is good. It tastes like honey in the lung. A little description I used to use, thinking about an old script. We used to get on the side here, a little sacks of the put honey in, as the old shepherds did. And when the sick would get, the sheep would all get sick, they'd take off some of the honey out of the script bag, and put it on a last stone rock, and call the sick sheep. And let that sick sheep go to licking on that rock. And when he go to licking the honey off of the rock, he went to lick some of the limestone in while licking the honey. You know what happened? The sick sheep got well. Now look here, brother, I got a whole script bag full of it tonight, and I'm going to put it on the Baptist Church, Methodist Church, the Presbyterian Church, or the Pentecostal Church. I'm putting it on Christ Jesus for the rock, and you sick sheep for the licking, and you sure to get some out of it. Listen, you're not getting old man today, and I'm going to work hard. Look on him. You're giving. Don't pay attention to what your church says. Pay attention to Christ. Follow him. For in him he is the church. I see go God's provided way. He never said the Methodist was God's provided way. He didn't say the Baptist was. Or any other church. He said, I am the way. The truth and the life. He said, well, how do I know what they is? By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Become members of that body. First Corinthians 12. That's right. Subject to God. Everything he's got in his kingdom belongs to us. He just takes a whole big uh, book full of checks and signs his name on the bottom and says, here you are, son, anything you need, go get it. Amen. Don't be afraid to fill it out. Put it out and say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You'll take it back. Watch everything you desire. Mark 11, 24. When you pray, believe you receive it, you shall have it. Find out the text, the Lord, and healing. Tell it off, say, there you are, Lord. I ask in Jesus' name for healing. Say, thank you, Lord. Walk out on with it. All the good news. Come to God. Like them crows sitting down that food you'll like. There it is. Thou need salvation for my soul. Well, you do just try to say, Said, come on to me, all you labor and every day now, give me rest. That's for me, Lord. If you're not checking each salvation, hand it to me, Lord. You know what Thank you, Lord. Walk away with it. Need the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Tell you in the city of Jerusalem, tell you to do with power from on high. As it is, the Holy Ghost come upon you, you'll be witness me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and most parts of the world. You believe it? You'll have to check and set it up tonight and see what happens. <laughs> Gotta get it. God's provided way. He provides you a checkbook. Wait until it out. God promised it. Do you believe that? God always has to provide a way. There's a little guy by the name of Jairus one day. Oh, he kind of joined his stuff up with a bunch of unbelievers. Like a whole lot of preachers that are joined up the same way today. The Bible said, yoke yourself out amongst unbelievers. All right. The first thing you know, what? Who says that? You are. Well, the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink dead and things where they hear on the sick they shall recover. Amen. You have preached that and had the churches day to kick you out the door. Amen. That's right. Don't know God's provided way, but that's what he said. That's what Jesus said. Do you believe it? Amen. Yes, sir. And then if he said so, amen. I believe it. I think it's the truth. And I'm walking his way, what he said to me. And he's confirmed it with signs and wonders following. Amen. That's right. But just do the same thing. Walk on his forever. Whosoever will, let me come on in. Come on. God's called you. He's got to come. So come right on in. Don't wait any longer. Take it tonight. I see this little fellow. He joined himself up. He loved Jesus. But yet, he was just trying to wait. He didn't want to lose his prestige. <laughs> you know, the prestige. So he said, I did. So the Lord said, Look at that little fellow down there. I believe that's leading him to eternal life. And there he is with that bunch of unbelievers. So I have to up. He just let his daughter get sick. He said, well, I'll call in Dr. Dole. Dr. Dole looked her over. He said, Paul's getting low. Charles, tell you what we better do. We better do this and that. He gave her all the drugs and so forth. She went right on dying. And he said, I, 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 I wonder if God's got to provide his way. <laughs> oh, 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 my. The man he criticized so much about the divine healing. I heard that. And he said, yes. Yes. Charles, don't you think he's a hypocrite? No, said the Holy Spirit. He's not a hypocrite. You believe in him. Oh, uh, 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 I, I, I guess he is. That's the way some of these borderline preachers are. Uh, just afraid, oh, God, take the wishbone out of you and put a back on you. I just told you what I was doing He said, Lord, give me the backbone the size of a solo. Put plenty of knowledge in the gable into my soul. And let me fight the devil as long as I got one tooth left and that's gone until I die. Right. 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 You say, I have one tooth left. Uh, she fought two, so she didn't have one tooth left, and she just gummed that coon 
He's the lamb provided for your eyes, your spiritual eyes. He's the lamb provided for your soul. He's the lamb provided for your escape of hell. He's the lamb provided for your glory in heaven. Won't you receive him while we pray, while we bow our heads, O oh Lord God? Creator of heavens and earth, our most everlasting life, give him every good gift. Send our blessings upon this people. These poor little unprepared remarks, Lord, but I know that you have a provided way. You said as it was in the days of Lord, so would it be in the coming of the Son of Man, a preparation time, a time when a place would be prepared for those who want to escape the wrath. I pray, God, that right now, that that Lamb of God that is provided for the blind man's eyes, or the woman with the blood issue to stop the blood issue, the Lamb that was provided for the dead Lazarus. God have mercy. When I think about it, that's the same Lamb was provided for my blind eyes one day. When Mary and Brothers told me three years ago I didn't have a hope of ever being well again, God provided the Lamb. When you sent your angel down the other green field and said, Go do this, how could I do it before a great world of atheists and unbelievers? But God provided the Lamb. God, my poor little church here, Lord, as I look at it, and I think of many thousands of miles across the seas and coals and plains and icebergs. God sat there many times in the lonely room praying. Think about the times that for me to come by here and shake my hand. The old sawdust is lay on the floor. The wind is shaking when the wind blows. I think of bringing my own guiding wife and laying her down here at the foot of the cross, preaching her funeral. Remember seeing my little baby Lord lay on her arm. I remember poor little Billy Paul that you feel with the Holy Ghost a few hours ago, coming down to the grave there that morning to put an Easter fire on it. He started crying. I put my arm around the little fellow and said, God has provided the land. A sin offering. Someday this little grave will open. Mommy will come out and show her little sister. God has a provided land. Some of these days, God put my life sermons preached. I lay down in the room and I feel the pulse coming up my sleeve. The cold, dead tides floating into my room as the wind is open, the curtains blowing. Shut up and I feel that voice. I sit my life sermon. I sit the sheep. Put the sword down and the sheep will be trying to meet. I walk down to the valley of the shadow of death. I walk to the door. Spread out my eyes. Please give away my sword. I'm crossing over. Lord, push the lifeboat out of me. Receive me with your Lord. Receive me with your Lord. Not only me, but everyone here.